Hey friends, I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen. I'm so glad you're here. It's been a month of Sundays since I've shared any new crock pot recipes and I'm ready for a week of hands off cooking. These slow cooker meals are all very low prep and easy to throw together, minimal ingredients, and best of all, they're all delicious. So next week, enjoy the spring weather, give some of these a try, and let the crock pot do the heavy lifting. Tonight, we're taking one of our most favorite meals, which is Tuscan chicken, and we're gonna make it in the crock pot. Let's start by giving our crock pot a little spray with some non-stick stuff. Now let's put our chicken in the bottom of the crock pot. You can use three to four breasts for this recipe. And I'm using four because this is one we always like to have leftovers of. Gonna season it with just a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of Italian seasoning, and just a smidgen of chili powder. Now we're gonna flip these over and season them exactly the same way. I think what makes Tuscan chicken so good is that it is so flavorful. The sun-dried tomatoes are delicious, but it's a very powerful flavor. So I think you really need to season all the other layers with these other seasonings to balance out that flavor a little bit. Now we're gonna mix up our little cheesy and seasoned up mixture that goes over our chicken. And I'm putting in two ounces of softened cream cheese, a couple of teaspoons full of minced garlic. We need about a half a cup of sun-dried tomatoes and we wanna drain these pretty well. If yours are whole, go ahead and chop them up, but this jar I've got was julienne cut. I'm gonna pour in about a half a cup of chicken broth a full cup of heavy cream, about half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese, and I'm gonna throw in about half a cup of mozzarella too. I make a baked Tuscan chicken all the time, and I looked up a crock pot recipe for Tuscan chicken, and I'm adapting it to how I usually make mine. This original mixture in the crock pot recipe, it did not include the mozzarella cheese, it didn't include the cream cheese. Also, the seasonings were just on the chicken, but I always season my mixture. Just a little bit of Italian seasoning, a little bit of chili powder, and a little bit of onion powder. This mixture is a lot thicker when I just do it in the oven, but I feel like we did need the addition of the chicken broth in here since this is going in the crock pot for a few hours. I'll be sure to type this recipe up, putting the changes in that I made so that you can go to my website and print that off or pin it if you're interested. Now that we have our chicken seasoned up so pretty, we're just gonna take the creamy mixture with the tomatoes and additional seasonings and pour it right over our chicken. Make sure everybody's got some good stuff on it down in here. Pop the lid on it, and I'm gonna cook mine on high. Should be done in about three hours. You can definitely cook it on low for about five to six hours. I want mine done in the early afternoon, so when Maddie gets home from school, it should be ready for her to eat before she goes to work because Tuscan chicken is her absolute favorite. It calls for about a cup of spinach. I probably use a little bit more. One little extra step that I don't mind doing is chopping my spinach up. These are not super big leaves anyway. This is baby spinach, but no longer than this is gonna be sitting in the crock pot. I like to just chop it up in a little bit smaller pieces. That's just how the old Efflers seem to prefer it around here. So I'll cut it for them. It's been about three hours. My chicken is done. Now I'm just gonna throw about a cup of spinach on top of here. Maybe a little more. Can't help myself. I like it. Also like to sprinkle just a little bit of Parmesan cheese and just a little bit more mozzarella right over the top. Put this lid back on. Let this sit for about 30 minutes until that spinach is wilted. Keeping with a simple thing today, while that spinach wilts, I'm gonna make some instant mashed potatoes. I'm pretty sure Patrick and Maddie will enjoy that. And I had, oh, about yay much of this bag of cavatappi pasta left, and I think I'm gonna boil that up and eat mine over that. 
All the flavors of our classic baked Tuscan chicken were in this crock pot version. It was so handy to be able to set it and forget it, then come back and have it all ready. The chicken was so juicy, so delicious. I'm already thinking about another version I saw where you boil your pasta, then actually stir it into the crock pot and shred the chicken. So we might have another variation of this coming up before summer's over. It's a great one to try. I'm always looking for new recipes to try out on the family and then share them with you guys. But you know, sometimes it seems like I've made just about everything that there is to make and I'm at a loss for ideas. That's my sign to check the menu for America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh. HelloFresh saves me time, money, and stress by delivering fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes right to my door at a great price. If you're in a recipe rut too, you can always find something new and exciting to try from their menus with over 45 recipes to choose from every week and not a single trip to the grocery store and no meal planning on your part. Just choose your meals, select your delivery date, HelloFresh takes care of the rest. All you have to do is open your weekly box and use the step-by-step -step recipes to get dinner going. Every HelloFresh box is packed with farm fresh ingredients and everything you need is already pre-portioned out for you. That means less wasted food and no more wasted money at the store on a one or two time use ingredient that just ends up lost in the fridge. When the days are packed full, HelloFresh has a lineup of quick and easy meals that are ready to save the day. I've been making it a point to order one of the 15 minute recipes in each of my last few boxes. It gives me a quick option on really busy nights and they're also great for Patrick or Maddie to put together for lunch and we've loved them all. And as a special treat, when you sign up today, you'll unlock free dessert for life. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code MAMASWEET for free dessert for life. One dessert item per box while the subscription is active. That's code MAMASWEET at HelloFresh.com for free dessert for life. All the details and the link will be down in the description box. And thank you, HelloFresh, for being a longtime supporter of my channel. Friends, it's been a while since I scratched my Tex-Mex itch. We're doing it today with a crock pot chicken enchilada casserole. I just can't wait. I'm starting with some street taco size flour tortillas. I like this mission brand because it's kind of thick around the edges. Anyhow, these are street taco size. I thought I was buying this size here. I thought this was street taco. These are actually fajita. So these are tiny, but you know it doesn't matter because we're going to cut them into pieces anyway. I'm cutting them into quarters and this is one of those recipes where you're just not going to know how much it takes till you get in there. The original recipe did say 16 taco size corn tortillas. So if it's taco size, probably be 16 of them. But I just chose to use the flour tortillas because honestly, I just like a flour tortilla. Look at that. I really like this mission. I'm a cheapie. I haven't bought these in a long time. I buy great value in Kroger all the time. Mm, these taste really good. I might have to start splurging. But I do keep them in the refrigerator because like we make wraps out of these all the time. Maybe keeping them in the fridge is what makes them lose their, you know, fluffiness, get a little flat. Let me know down below your favorite soft flour tortilla because I use them every week. That's why I go with the cheaper brand. But man, look at that. Mission, your game is on. For our chicken mixture, I'm using two cups of shredded chicken breast. I maybe could have used another cup, but that was what I had. We're gonna mix in one envelope of taco seasoning. Make your own or just use the store brand that you like. Gonna pour in one can of Rotel. This is diced tomatoes with green chilies. Did not say to drain this, so I didn't. Gonna get all this mixed together now. You could definitely throw in a can of black beans here. I'd rinse them and drain them. You could throw in some corn, some of that Fiesta corn in the can that has bell peppers with it. That would be good. I'm keeping it simple. Maddie is going to be here with us for dinner tonight. And per her last email, she really hates it when I put black beans and corn in everything. So I'm not doing that. 
Now assembly begins. Let's give this pot a spray with some nonstick cooking spray. And I'm just going to put down a little bit of our green enchilada sauce. And you can definitely use red if you'd like. Now I'm just going to lay down some of my flour tortilla pieces. You don't have to cover every square inch, but we want to get most of it. Now we're going to take about a third of our chicken mixture, just spread it around in here. And I'm using a four quart oval crock pot today. I think this little crock pot is probably the workhorse. Even more than my new one I have, I go for this one almost every single time. If something will fit, this is the one I'm cooking it in. It's lightweight and easy to handle. And, you know, it cooks really good. Let's ladle a little bit more of our sauce on. Now about a cup of Monterey Jack cheese. We're just going to make these layers a couple more times. We should have enough ingredients to have at least three layers. I'm doing chicken, but you know, you could do beef, pork, whatever protein you'd like in this. When I came across this recipe, I just thought to myself, I could not remember the last time I made a Tex-Mex dish with the green enchilada sauce. Last layer, and you absolutely do not have to cut these up if you don't want to, but it's gonna make it a whole lot easier come serving time. Dumping the last of my chicken mixture in here. Smells wonderful. When you get to the end of your ingredients, you just want to top this last cheese layer with some more tortillas. And looks like I've used every bit of this 11 ounce package, give or take the couple bites I've eaten. Then you're just gonna pour your remaining sauce right over the top. And this was a 28 ounce can of enchilada sauce. You really wanna get those tortilla strips wet. Top it with your remaining cheese. This is definitely one you could get a rotisserie chicken and throw this together real quick after work. Head to the ball field for practice, games, whatever. Couple hours come home and you've got dinner ready. I said it was quick, but quick is never quick enough when you're waiting on enchiladas. So I'm cooking it on high. This will be ready in just one to two hours. You can cook it on low for two to three hours. As is my custom, my hour and a half to two hours turned into two and a half. This is looking beautiful, bubbly, and delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the crock pot off and cut up some toppings. It's hard to scoop these kind of casseroles out intact pieces, but the longer you let it set in the crock pot, that will get easier. This was absolutely delicious. Patrick and I ate out of it the first night. Then the next night, the kids were over and we took out the leftovers. It definitely did hold together better in leftover form. It tastes even better the second day. This was so good, so easy. Fed a lot of people with just a little bit of money and a little bit of work. And when I said this oval crock pot cooks good, I mean it cooks good for layered casseroles like this. It's a lot easier to form a casserole in a smaller crock pot. You can have thicker layers instead of them being all spread out. Y'all know I can't get my words out right sometimes. I've mentioned before that I prep chicken pretty much every week in my crock pot. I like to show you how I do that every now and again. Of course, I start by spraying my crock with some nonstick cooking spray. Put a couple of chicken breasts down in here. Don't worry, that's just a little seasoning getting on there off my tongs where I handled something else before this. I like to add just a little chicken broth to keep it moist and juicy. I especially don't want to skip that step if I'm going to be gone all day and leave this in here. I always use the same basic seasonings which is black pepper and I just use my anti no nos which is salt, onion powder, and garlic powder. I always use that. Now, sometimes I'll throw in some Italian seasoning. I think that is a great, just all round flavor. And sometimes I'll throw in some other seasonings if I know specifically what I'm using this chicken for. And I do specifically know what I'm gonna be making with this chicken. And I don't want Italian seasoning. Ooh, this one's about gone. And um, I didn't want the Italian seasoning flavor, but I could go with some paprika. 
pop that lid on. I'm going to cook mine on high. This will probably take just a couple of hours. I'm going to be here all day to keep my eye on it. I'm doing other things. You can also cook it on low anywhere from four to six. I've even went eight hours when I've been out shopping or something and lost track of time. This is very forgiving and a great way to prep chicken in advance. Then you can just shred it up. You can use it in recipes throughout the week or you can freeze it for use later. I love lasagna, but today I need some hands-off cooking, so we're going to make a crock pot lasagna soup. The first thing we need to do is brown up some ground beef, and I am going to use my new Ninja Food Possible for this. It's a slow cooker, but you can do a lot of other things in it too. I've had my eye on this for a while just for this function where I can brown meat, braise things before I slow cook them all in one pot. So I set it to sear, and I'm just going to let it heat up on low. And of course you can brown your meat up on top of the stove. I just knew my regular watchers of the channel here would know this was not my usual crock pot. Now that I've got that broken up, I'm going to go ahead and put in this small sweet onion that I've diced up. I am going to use a little paper towel just to get up any excess grease that might be coming off of my meat here as it's cooking up. Going to go ahead and season this meat up with about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And I'm going to throw in a couple of nice, generous spoonfuls of minced garlic. It is lasagna and we're making after all. Now let's get all this seasoned up and let that garlic cook about a minute. Now that you have your seasoned meat, onions, and garlic in your crock pot, we're going to pour in six cups of low-sodium beef broth. Now, just add in your favorite 24-ounce jar or can of pasta sauce and a 28-ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Now, let's put in a nice, generous tablespoon of Italian seasoning. And I'm going to go ahead and give this one initial stir to get all this incorporated. Now, we're going to add in 8 ounces of our uncooked lasagna noodles. I love these little Mafalda noodles. I've searched every grocery store in my town. I've never been able to find these in any grocery store in my town. But lo and behold, one day I was at Trader Joe's in Knoxville and they sell these. So if you can't get your hand on these cute little miniature lasagna noodles, it is perfectly fine just to take a regular lasagna noodle and break it into pieces. That's how I've made this soup for years on top of the stove. It works just fine. I just think these are really cute, especially in lasagna soup or a skillet lasagna. Let's get all of this stirred in together, making sure all of our noodles are submerged in this tomatoey broth. Now let's pop the lid on this crock pot. I'm gonna set mine to cook on high for three to four hours. This can definitely go on low for six to eight. It'll hold just fine. You might be thinking, well, there is my meat sauce and there is my noodles. Where's my cheese? Well, here comes the cheese. We're taking about a cup of a ricotta cheese, about a half a cup of Parmesan cheese, about a half a cup of mozzarella cheese, and about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. We're just gonna mix all of this together and I'm gonna set it in the fridge. Then when we're ready to serve up our soup, I'll show you how we work this cheese in. I really like that this soup gets thick. Now you're welcome to add more broth, definitely in the leftovers if you want more broth. It's good to heat it like that. But when you first serve this up, it's piping hot. Put a big dollop of your cheese mixture in there. And we had a little garlic toast on the side. Just stir that cheese down in there. It's going to get melty and gooey and oh so delicious. This is all the wonderful things we love about lasagna in hardly any of the prep. I love this. I love it on top of the stove, and I especially love it made in this crock pot. This is awesome. I'll be doing this all year. I love finding fun little cakes and things to make in the crock pot. Tonight, we're going to make a cherry 7-Up crock pot cake. This is just as easy as pie. I pulled my crock out here, so I can demonstrate it a little bit better. Gonna give it a good little spray so nothing will stick. Gonna pour in one white cake mix, just using it dry, not adding anything. Now I'm gonna pour in 12 ounces of 7-Up. Gets a little foamy, but that's okay. 
I would definitely say to get a 16 ounce bottle or a 20 ounce bottle. Just the cake mix here takes a 12 ounce can, but you definitely want to have a little left over to make a glaze out of. And we're just going to mix this all together and make sure that all of the cake mix is wet. You don't want any of it left dry. Now I've got just a little six ounce jar of maraschino cherries. And I'm just going to take a little bit, whoops, of the juice here. And I'm just going to kind of swirl it in through here. You don't have to have any rhyme or reason. I might pour just a little bit more. Now I'm just going to drop some cherries in here, however many you want. I couldn't wait to try this going into spring. I thought this is a perfect recipe for one of those nights when the kids come over and we're cooking out and you want kind of a neat, fresh, springy summer dessert, but you don't want to be in here with the oven heated up all night. Wanted to test it out for Easter too. This might show up at Easter next year. And I just went ahead and used every cherry in here. I mean, it was only a six ounce jar and YOLO. What am I gonna do with these cherries? And I am gonna hold on to the rest of this juice also until I'm done and we'll use it in the glaze. I'm gonna cook this on high for about an hour and a half. We'll check it with a toothpick in the center. If it's done, it's done. If not, we'll cook it an additional 30 to 45 minutes, checking it every 15 until we see that it's done. Mine, as you could see, was definitely not done in an hour and a half. So I let mine go another 45 minutes and I was just checking it in 15 minute increments. I believe it's done now. I'm going to turn it off. For our glaze, I've got about a quarter cup of powdered sugar. I'm just going to eyeball this and I'm going to pour in about two tablespoons of some of this 7-Up. And I'm going to use about a tablespoon of our juice off of our cherries. We're just going to give it a good little mix. I think I'm going to have to put some more powdered sugar in mine. That's what happens when I eyeball things. I want this a little bit thicker. I finally got it mixed up a little bit to my liking and I'm gonna pour some of it right over this cake here in the crock pot. Look how pink I got mine. <laughs> and I'm gonna leave a little bit to drizzle when we serve it up. I couldn't tell you how much powdered sugar I put in mine to get it as thick as I wanted. But man, this was such a pretty little spoon cake and it was so delicious. If you like a little sugary coffee cake with just a little hint of cherry, this is perfect. Total baby shower vibes here. You are gonna love this and we're definitely having this again. If you enjoyed tonight's video, I would love it if you give it a big thumbs up. And if you want some more quick and easy weeknight dinner inspiration, take a look at the video I have here for you. I know you'll enjoy it too. Thank you so much for being here this week. I appreciate you and I don't ever take the time we spend together for granted. Until next week, I send you love from my kitchen.